talking to people is, is really, really important. Right? So adapting your CV to every job is really important if you can. This is a tip for when you actually get out in the real world. Right? I'm actually in the process of doing this. Of, uh, uh, my wife is moving to the States, and so that means I'm moving too. And I have to actually go and look for a job. And it's here. And I have, to, I have to change my CV. So if I had actually rewritten my CV in the last two weeks, I don't know how much time it is. All right? But you have to do this. Because otherwise, I actually got a tip from the career day. I went and talked to one of the other guys in the booth. They hired lots of students, and they said it was obvious that they had sent this into a multiple companies. And they, if they'd done their homework, they would realize that we don't like Microsoft. All right? We're an open source company. We go out and say this. So they went and said, boy, I'm a Microsoft, you know, blah, blah, blah. And I have this badge, and I have that badge. And they're like, if they'd done their homework, they would have figured it out. Right? So make sure you do your homework for this sort of thing. Third, it's called the stuff, other stuff at the back. So when I showed you that other CV, this grades are at the top. Put your technical stuff, your grades, your references at the back of your CV. Then put it last. Okay? I want to see the stuff that's about you first. Right? Very, very important. Like, this stuff earns, why is it earning marks from me? Right, because oh, I have to think, oh, you know, really, really bad. CMPF. Now, we issued this instruction to all Summer of Code students, but yet five people didn't do it. All right, and guess what? Their CV didn't print very well. It was a abomination. PDF means everybody gets it. Right, I know uh, Adobe isn't the flavor of the month at the moment. Tough PDFs are. Because right, that way you can absolutely ensure what you expect your CV to look like is exactly what it's going to do. Um, if you put your CV on a web page and you haven't tried printing it, and I tried this, guess what? Three quarters of my CV was cut off because I went too wide. Right? Boy, what a goose. Because they must have looked at this and went, oh, CV's cut off. What am I supposed to do? Well, that goes in the bin. Right? Don't make it hard for people. Make it really, really easy. Okay? When you name your CV, and I saw 100 last night, put your name on it. Date it. So say it's John Clegg 2010. Right? If I see CV, all that sort of stuff, and I'm looking at a lot of them, I forget what it's called. And I don't really want to lose it. Mentally, it's good to see people who are actually organised to do things right. Just makes it easier for me. Don't make me think, right? So make sure you label it correctly. Alright, this is sort of what we said before, make sure it prints well. Right, to summarize all the stuff. So you want to put the important stuff at the front. Who are you? What are you interested in? What are you passionate about? Two, what are your core competencies, right? What, you know, can have. Give me an example of what you've done, how you did it, and what results were achieved. Right? So it actually came to a tangible result. Right? Here's a quick education summary, education and technical skills. Right? What I should say is this doesn't mean that every single CV that I say you should look exactly the same. And you'll see when I go through all the good ones, they look different. They did things differently. Okay? I think none of the CVs did something that I thought was outstanding. Like, there, was, there was one that was, I thought was perfect for a uh, man. He's got a job. Right? He was a graduate last year, he got into Summer of Code, and he got a job. I look at the CV, I'm not surprised. But there was none that actually blew me away with some special thing. There's something that some people did really, really well. I thought, hey, I've got a really good sense of this guy. There's one I can remember that. The positiveness that came out of reading that CV was really upbeat. And I was like, wow, okay. Like, it's missing a few holes, but like, he's a pretty decent guy. I'm going to go and look at it. Right? After reading the CV, I actually felt better after I imagine I'd be going through CV after CV after CV. This shone out. It was a remarkable difference. Right? So think about it, it doesn't have to be the same as everyone else. So the bonus tips. It's talking about how do we beat those myths, those things at the start, right? So you go on myth busters. 
Well, recruiters. One of the problems with recruiters is that they won't tell you necessarily if you've been represented. So what? Okay, so let's go through the process of recruitment. I'm a bank. I want to hire a programmer. The recruitment agency sends me four CVs. Three, maybe four, right? This is the best selection of the four best that we have. The recruitment company calls you up and says, there's this job at the bank, I think it'd be perfect, we'd like to put you forward. Yes. What you don't know is whether or not you actually got put forward. Because they might, um, you know, they're, they're checking whether or not somebody else has been put forward, that, that you might have built with another recruitment company that's put you forward. So they're trying to find out, are you already there? Because having your CV from two places, or from two recruitment companies, in a, a particular employer is bad. Makes them, makes, basically makes the, the uh, recruiters look crap. But makes you look crap as well, because you're not managing what your recruiters are doing. Okay? So, th this is one tip when dealing with recruiters, if you please do not forget, ask to make sure you get represented. This guy that I said I helped, this 35 year old guy, so he said, have I been put forward? They said yes. And I said, ask them what number you are. What number in the list am I? Because he knows there are four going forward. Are you in there? And guess what? They said, oh, you actually followed. So he never got put forward at all. It's a complete lie. Alright? So they do this a lot. I spent three months in England trying to get a job. And they said, they're putting me forward. And I'm like, my CV never went there. Alright? Bullshit. So call their bullshit. Ask me to get represented. You have a right to know. Remember, you are the asset. You're the thing that helps make the money. So make sure you know what you're doing. Right? Very, very important. So that's out of bus number one. Number two, um, having gone through this process quite recently, they actually say, like uh, eBay and um, there's another site, they actually said, paste your CV in here and we'll tell you what your, your CV matches, what jobs it matches. Like, fantastic, I don't even have to look. So I pasted in, no results now. Alright? They're matching keywords for roles. So if you think there's a particular job that you're interested in, that's going to have some keywords and phrases that are important to that job. If your CV contains the same keywords and phrases, the computer program goes match, forward. Okay? So think about that, and that's why you must customise your CV to each job. Alright? Going forward. So that's, where, that's, that's how you do these jobs. Third, the HR department, so these gatekeepers, so the net of um, You have to call them. And what you want to do is you want to speak to the guy, the person that's actually got the job. Alright? If you're not from New Zealand and you're foreign, um, it's highly likely that they won't consider you because you're from another country. I have to think. What does their degree mean? I don't know. Do they have experience elsewhere? I can't bring up somebody and find out. Right? Too hard. They won't do it. And they think, oh, maybe the English is crap. Well, if you talk to the person who's giving you the job, then you can cut that out straight away. So they talk to this person and they think, oh, your English is really good. When the CV comes in, they go, oh, yeah, the English box is ticked. My wife is from India. She could not get a job. This is what we did as a strategy to get her a job. So we called up the people, we talked to them, she talked to them and they're like, wow, you're, you're, so that one actually said, your English is amazing. And she was, you know, just, she doesn't like that sort of thing. She said that's really sort of, um, you know, a very crap thing for somebody to say, for somebody that's got excellent written English and speak, spoke English all their life. Right? But just because they come from a different country, suddenly English is all bad. Right? Did I get her a job? Absolutely. But suddenly that English was off, off the table. But even for the rest of you, if you've got somebody in HR, you need to talk to somebody who's getting the job. You want them to know this John, Cameron, Green, whatever it is, right? They want you want them to know about you. Very, very, very important. Alright? Talk to the person who's actually hiring. Because you want to find that out. Alright? 